Here I go attempting to repair the cassette deck that I declared to be unrepairable. In case you didn't see my first video about this deck, I found it at a thrift store for around $15. And you may think that's a great deal because it's a Technics, which is regarded to be a high quality brand of audio components. It has auto reverse, it supports chrome and metal tapes, and it has Dolby noise reduction. And those are all desirable features on a cassette deck. But the problem is, it doesn't work. At the very least, it's going to need new pinch rollers because the ones that were in it were completely disintegrating. And it may also need new belts because these decks are famous for the belts going bad and needing to be replaced. And as I later discovered, these decks are also famous for the plastic gears and the mechanism cracking and breaking. And on this particular model, I don't think there are any replacements available for those gears. Some of the higher end Technics decks, you can buy replacement gears for them, but this one you can't. So if those gears are cracked, it's game over for this deck. But I was able to get a belt kit for it. There you can see the set of four belts from Web Spare Parts. This cost $22.82. I also got a set of pinch rollers for it. It came in a set of five, even though it only needs four of them. And these cost $17.79. So my total repair cost so far is right around $40 for a deck that's worth about $40 in working condition. So that's why I declared it's not worth repairing these. Because even if your time is worth nothing and you're just doing this for fun, it just doesn't make financial sense to spend as much to repair it as what it's worth. Especially since this is a very low-end deck which lacks important features such as manual recording level. As you can see it only has automatic recording level. Since the belts on this deck are actually still intact I'm first going to try replacing the pinch rollers and see if that is enough to get it working and if it is then I'll replace the belts. And luckily it is rather easy to replace the pinch rollers on this deck because they just snap into place into the holders here. So I'll take the new pinch roller and snap it in. I was able to fish these out without needing to remove the mechanisms from the deck. So hopefully I'll be able to fish these holders with the pinch rollers on them back into place without needing to remove the mechanisms either. Nope. Maybe if you have smaller fingers or better tools than me, you'd be able to do it in situ, but I couldn't. Luckily I was able to remove the mechanism without needing to remove the front panel of the deck. So it wasn't too hard to get out. And here I have my assembled pinch rollers. Hopefully ready to just pop into place. Like that. You can see quite a bit of rust here. And that's another reason why I declared this deck to be unrepairable. Because if you open the door of a cassette deck and you see rust. It's best to just leave it and walk away. But if this ends up working I'm going to put some rust converter on that. So at least it doesn't get any worse. But for now, just pop in these pinch rollers and see if that's enough to get the mechanism working, even without replacing the belts. What the hell's wrong with it now? If I turn it on after I just replaced those pinch rollers, and the display is flashing and I can hear the motor running in time with the flashes. What, did the power supply crap out on me? Well, it stopped flashing, but that's not the complete display. It's missing the counters and everything, and none of the controls do anything. Like, it's supposed to be able to open the door. I don't want to close this one because then I wouldn't be able to open it again. And now I can't even turn it off. I'm pushing the power button, and that's not turning it off. I looked in the service manual, and this deck does have a service mode, which is indicated by the level meter flashing. But we had the entire display flashing, not just the level meter. But I haven't even been able to go back to that because now whenever I plug it in without even needing to press the power button it comes on and shows the level meter continuously but nothing else shows up and none of the buttons do anything and you're supposed to be able to exit out of the service mode by holding down the stop button for six seconds but I tried that and it does not work so I don't think this is in service mode I think it's just faulty 
I think we just witnessed the death of this cassette deck because I believe what was happening when the display was flashing was that something was overloading the power supply and causing it to shut down and reset and as soon as it came back on it would overload again and shut down again and the process repeated until eventually whatever that component that was overloading the power supply shorted out entirely and now as soon as I plug it in you can see only the level meter lights up and the right side motor is running continuously, which is not supposed to happen. I know in some cassette decks the motors do run continuously whenever it's turned on, but this is not one of them. So this motor is running continuously. This motor is not running at all, and it's not responding to any of the buttons. So I think the microprocessor in this is not running at all. And the only reason this part of the display is on, because that's the only part of it that shows up all the time whenever it's turned on so it doesn't need to be controlled by the microprocessor but everything else like the counters and the symbols that show up when it's playing or rewinding or when you turn on Dolby noise reduction those are controlled by the CPU in this and if the CPU is not running you don't get those indications on the display and also it's not responding to the power switch because that's also controlled through the main CPU so this thing is now pretty much totally dead. And I think I found the culprit. That diode sure looks burnt along with these other components here. So it's possible that the diode shorted to ground which caused the voltage regulator to fail. Or maybe the voltage regulator shorted which caused the diode to blow open. And the thing is you can easily get these cascade failures where I could replace these two components and they would just fail again because the actual problem is somewhere further down the line and this is not the cause of it this is just the symptom of it and these are the kinds of problems you can run into with these cassette decks from the 90s where the circuitry is all highly integrated and computerized on older and simpler cassette decks the problems you're going to run into are basically mechanical belts idlers motors things like that but on these decks in addition to all those mechanical problems you can also easily have electronic problems which makes them even more challenging to repair and even more likely to not be worth repairing at least i'm glad it broke on me before i went through all the trouble of unsoldering the motor and removing this circuit board to gain access to replace the belts but i'm going to tear this apart anyway just to see if it has those broken plastic gears that everybody was talking about as promised, I did desolder the motor to gain access to the plastic fantastic mechanism. The original belts are still intact. They're maybe not as supple as they used to be, but they're certainly not turning to goo yet. And this is the wonderful plastic flywheel, which weighs barely anything. And I think these two gears are the ones that people were talking about cracking and chipping off teeth. And if I rotate the spindle there, I don't see any missing teeth on that gear. Same thing with this one. So those gears seem to be okay. So if this deck didn't die on me, replacing the pinch rollers probably would have been enough to get it working again. But as people say, these are prone to cracking and breaking so they're a known failure point in addition to the belts and pinch rollers. Here's one of the motors which I am going to save because these are good quality Matsushita or Matsusta or however you want to say it motors and this is actually quite a bit newer than I expected because the date on it says the 8th of May 1999 and all the other documentation I can see for this deck says it's from around 1996 so apparently they kept it in production for a number of years. So that's a good quality motor, worth saving. So I just spent about $40 trying to repair a cassette deck that is worth about $40. And all I got out of it are two good motors and a bunch of spare screws. But I will keep the belts and pinch rollers because I'm sure they'll come in handy for repairing another deck in the future. Just not one of these. And I think it's important to document this failure because people like seeing old 
broken items being restored and made to work again. So much so that there's an entire industry of fake restoration videos where they take a working item and then they purposely destroy it and then show the clips in reverse order to make it look like they're fixing it. And that may lead to unrealistic expectations of people trying to fix things like this and not being successful and feeling like it's their fault they weren't able to fix it when in reality the odds were probably stacked against them to begin with. And like I said in my first video in this series, this is why I'm not as negative about the new cassette equipment available today as many other cassette tape enthusiasts are. Because any cassette player that works is better than one that doesn't. Washington weather. And here is the Technics deck where it belongs, in the e-waste drop-off bin. So don't bother asking me to send it to you because you think you can fix it. But don't worry, there's plenty of other broken ones out there that you can take a shot at fixing. Now don't get me wrong, I don't mean to discourage people from repairing vintage cassette decks. But I do encourage you to choose one that is worth repairing, or better yet, Keep swiping left until you find one that does not need to be repaired, such as this very nice JVC deck from 1990, or this much simpler but still good sounding auto reverse realistic deck from 1993, or this Panasonic boombox from 2001 with automatic opening cassette door and remote control operation. 